What's up everybody, and welcome to the first video on the Language Corner channel. My name is Jaseed, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the subfields of linguistics, what they are, how they relate to each other, and broadly, what linguistics is. So first off, linguistics is an academic discipline. By that, I mean that it's a body of knowledge or field of study that people specialize in. More specifically, linguistics is a science. Linguistics researchers, often called linguists, employ the techniques outlined by the scientific method to investigate language. Linguistics as a field can be divided a number of ways. One common way the field is divided is by linguistic structures. Phonetics is the study of the physics, anatomy, and general physical properties of language. Phonology is the study of discrete, abstract elements in the speaker's mind that distinguish meaning. These are called phonemes, and in spoken languages, those usually correspond to letters in the alphabet, like P or N. But in sign languages, these refer to signs and hand shapes that signers use. Morphology is the study of how these discrete abstract elements, often called morphemes, are combined to create words, and how these words can be modified. An example of these three linguistic structures could be given with virtually any word. For this example, I'm going to use the word runners. The word runners is composed of three morphemes. The root, or unbound, morpheme, run, the agentive suffix er and the plural suffix s. The two suffixes, by nature of requiring a stem to come after, are bound. They cannot appear alone without an unbound morpheme. You can't point to something and say s to indicate that it's plural. Each morpheme can also be broken down into phonemes. Run is broken down into a vowel and two consonants, a rhotic r a mid-near-back vowel in my dialect, and a coronal nasal. Each of these can be further analyzed by the exact phonetic features that they possess. The rhotic can be realized in many ways depending on your accent. For example, in Scotland and parts of Ireland, they tend to use a flap or even a trill, like rrr, for the rhotic in English, whereas I pronounce it as a retroflex approximant, r. The vowel varies depending on your dialect, but it's pretty low and mid in my accent and it's partially nasalized for everyone because the following consonant is a nasal. There actually isn't a lot of variation in the, in the last consonant. Across the board, that one is almost always an alveolar nasal stop. Other linguistic structures that linguists study include syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Syntax is kind of like morphology, but for groups of words. It's worth noting right here that words isn't actually a useful concept in some languages. For example, many languages of the world more often create sentence-long words by attaching many, many morphemes to a single root. For instance, in Nahuatl, the language of the Aztec Empire and of the modern indigenous people of central Mexico, the word means I shall make someone give you something. But the only unbound morpheme in the word is maki, meaning give. Broken down morpheme by morpheme, it's ni, meaning I, meets meaning you, te, meaning someone, or undefined person, tla, meaning something, or undefined thing, maki, meaning give, ilti, a causative suffix, and s, a future suffix. That being said, syntax is the study of how words are put together to create grammatical sentences. Syntacticians study, for example, where the subject, object, and verb go in a sentence, and the rules that govern, for example, whether the adjective comes before the noun or whether the verb comes after the object. Semantics is concerned with meaning, specifically in the relationship between words, phrases, signs, or symbols, and what they refer to. An example of what a semanticist or semantician might study is how English speakers use the word red to refer to a wide variety of colors, ranging from a coppery orange, as in red hair, to a dark, almost purple, as in red wine. Or, what exactly you mean when you call penguins, ostriches, and hummingbirds all birds? And pragmatics is the study of context. For example, the phrase, you have a green light, means only one thing literally, that you currently possess a light bulb that shines green. However, with context, it might mean that the traffic signal has changed to green, meaning that you can leave the intersection, or that your body is cast in a greenish glow, or that you're permitted to continue in a non-driving context. 
in some languages, such as gerbil, an Aboriginal language of northeastern Australia, there is a taboo against the use of everyday words in the presence of certain relatives. For example, your mother-in-law, your child-in-law, your paternal aunt's child, or your maternal uncle's child. If any of those relatives are present, a gerbil speaker has to switch to a completely separate lexicon, reserved exclusively for that purpose. There are other smaller subfields of linguistics, like lexicology, the study of words, orthography, the study of writing systems, language pedagogy, the study of language education, and rhetoric concerned with discourse and persuasion. But the six fields I just mentioned are the core of modern linguistics. However, these six fields all really lie in the same theoretical domain of linguistics. Theoretical linguistics includes all the fields I just mentioned, and it includes quantitative linguistics, which studies language specifically using statistical methods, and cognitive linguistics, which studies how language is related to cognition and thought. Generative linguistics and functional linguistics are just barely outside the core in theoretical linguistics territory because they draw so heavily from the core. Generative linguistics aims to describe the core subfields of linguistics using stated rules. Noun phrases consist of adjectives followed by a noun, or a postpositional phrase consists of a noun followed by an adposition. Functional theories of linguistics propose that language is best analyzed and understood with reference to its functions, as opposed to how words relate to each other. In other words, functional theories of grammar aim to pay attention to the way language is actually used in a communicative context. Descriptive linguistics aims to objectively analyze and describe how language is or was actually used by a group of people. It includes phonetics, graphetics, and etymology, and to a lesser degree, everything else in the core, as well as historical linguistics and anthropological linguistics. Historical linguistics is the study of language change over time, and anthropological linguistics is the study of the role that language plays in making and maintaining culture in society. Historical linguistics also includes comparative linguistics, which makes use of the comparative method to classify and group languages. This is related to linguistic typology, which aims to study the differences between the world's languages. Sociolinguistics is the study of the aspects of society that affect the use of language. It overlaps quite a bit with pragmatics and linguistic anthropology. Lastly, applied linguistics is the broadest and most interdisciplinary part of the field. Applied linguistics is really the intersection of linguistics with several other fields. Computational linguistics aims to understand linguistics through the lens of computer science. Two of the most popular applications of computational linguistics these days are natural language processing and machine translation. Evolutionary linguistics is concerned with the archaeology, anthropology, biology, genetics, neuroscience, history, and prehistory of the evolution of language. Forensic linguistics is the marriage of forensic science and linguistics. Forensic linguists apply their expertise in criminal investigation, trials, or other judicial procedures. Internet linguistics is the study of language as it relates to the internet, how, if at all, the internet is changing language, how people use language on the internet, etc. Language education brings together pedagogy, which is the study of teaching, with linguistics. It's concerned with how non-native languages are taught best and learned best. Language assessment is concerned with the evaluation of linguistic competence and ability. Language documentation aims to fully describe the practices of linguistic communities for posterity or, more often, for revitalization. Language revitalization is a related field that aims to halt or reverse the decline of a language or to revive a dormant one. Those who study language revitalization study the best practices for documenting and encouraging the use of the language. Linguistic anthropology studies how language influences the other aspects of life, especially social life. Neurolinguistics brings together fields like linguistics, psychiatry, and neuropsychology, and aims to understand how the brain acquires, understands, and produces language. And the last major subfield is psycholinguistics. It's the marriage of psychology and linguistics. Psycholinguists, apart from sounding like a group of linguists that have gone crazy, refers to the people who study the cognitive processes that make it possible to generate sentences from vocabulary and grammatical structures. So that's my map of linguistics. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to help me decide the topics for my next videos, check out my Patreon page. If you have any comments or questions, please be sure to leave those below. If you notice that I forgot to add anything, or if you think I put something on the wrong part of the map, also please let me know. I'm really excited to get feedback on this. Well, that's all for this video. Don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell if you want to get notifications for my videos. Stay humble, stay curious, 
and I'll see you guys later.